Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to Central Illinois Sports as we get you ready for game two of our regional semifinals here. We just had a heck of a ball game as uh, Payson Seymour upset the number one team in the state in New Berlin. And now the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes and the Triopia Trojans are going to try and find out who will take on that Payson Seymour squad in Friday's regional championship. We are on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. We're going to take a couple of minutes and we'll get you set for uh, Seymour uh, Space semifinal number two. We'll spit it out all here in a second. And we'll also talk to Payson Seymour head coach Tyler Dushinsky here before we get going. You're watching it all live on Central Illinois Sports. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house. Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Did you know that Prairie Land FS doesn't just sell seed? They treat it and box it right here at one of their local facilities, then deliver it to your farm or fields. Growers trust Prairie Land FS to deliver top performing crop protection products that promise the best performance before, during, and after the growing season. Prairie Land FS, your leading supplier of choice. Back with you live here on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Great Rivers Bank with locations in Pittsfield, Barry, Liberty, and Hannibal here to help you with lending and personal banking needs. Friendly service and dedicated loan officers can help you through buying a home, opening a business, or making a deposit. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are sitting here on a little of, bit of a variant of the pregame show with Tyler Dushinsky, head coach for Payson Seymour, as his Indian squad just upset the number one ranked team in the state in New Berlin to advance to the championship game. And... Uh, coach would tell you why you don't get a lot of opportunities like this in a coaching career or really at any point in anybody's career to have the story written that you guys just did on your home floor a team that has been reeling in the second half of the season to, to maybe put it bluntly to come out and put on the performance you just did Damon and I talked you don't have to play a perfect game against a team like that but by gosh you almost maybe did <laughs> yeah I mean they uh, they're they're a heck of a team they're a heck of a team and they gave us a, a fit. Um, you know, we we typically like to score uh, mid, high, upper 50s, and and it, it took I think 40, what 41, 42 tonight um, for us to get it, get the job done. But um, you know, I've I've told our kids uh, from day one this year that I want to get our community back back involved within our program, and um, you know, games like this is, is a great way to get them uh, back involved and supporting our, our team. You know, you watch a, a team like this, they overcome the third quarter slump when usually an underdog kind of fades away in the third quarter. Your team answered, they answered defensively and rebounding most importantly because obviously they didn't allow a lot of free, uh, field goals in the second half. And, you know, your team's been a lot of run and gun this year. Yeah. You were able to clamp down defensively and able to clamp down rebounding, and um, that's just two big things that you've got to be able to do in the postseason to win. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I, I think when when we started the year off, we started I, I think uh, thirteen and three or something, and and then we hit a, a nice little nice little ten game skid. Um, but out of those games, we learned that rebounding the basketball is is the most important thing for us to be successful when it comes to. Um, when it comes to us being successful with us being undersized, we, we have to um, we have to be able to rebound. And, and we, boys did a, an amazing job tonight. Coach, you and I talked about it a little bit off the air here before you we started the interview. But what does it say when you have a senior in Brian hmm. Deeker who has a chance to make a name for himself right there and, and take it to the hole for the final bucket of the game to try to uh, win this game? And if he misses, it goes into overtime. But he drives and he dishes to a to a five eight five nine sophomore for a <laughs> wide open look at a three point attempt. What does that say about Brian Deeker, and what does that say about how your team really truly defines what team is? Yeah, um, there, there's been several occasions where where this year that Brian has given up the the uh, the ball in, in big moments, and um, I you know it. it I, I just told him in the locker room. I said that is why you are who you are, and that is why everybody loves you. Um, 
I think almost every senior in high school basketball would have tried to take that shot, um, you know, try and get fouled. But he saw a, a really good shooter wide open and made that play because he is a very unselfish player. And, and I've said all along, his biggest priority is, is to win for, for Payson and win for our community. So he's done a great job with that. Coach, we thank you for the time. We're going to let you get settled, get something to eat in the hospitality room, and uh, you've got a semifinal to scout, man. Yes, Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. We'll see you on Friday night. Thank you, guys. We're watching the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. When we come back, we're going to introduce you to the starters for Griggsville Perry versus Triopia. You're watching it all live here on Central Illinois Sports. Seed selection is one of the important decisions required to achieve yield goals. Logan AgriService represents top seed lines in the industry like Lewis Hybrids, Stein Seed, and AgriGold, and focuses on products developed to meet or exceed our customers' expectations. Sit down with one of our experienced local seed experts who will work with you to help select top-producing corn hybrids and soybean varieties tailored for your specific soils and fertility levels. Or visit us online at loganag.com. Logan AgriService, serving agriculture since 1962. Are you short on time or budget but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant in Pittsfield. Welcome you back here for the starting lineups brought to you tonight by Farm and Home Supply. From snacks and hoodies to power tools and lawn chairs, no other place has it all like your local Farm and Home Supply. It is the 24 and 8 Griggsville Perry Tornadoes, winners of five of their last six games, taking on the Triopia Trojans at 16 and 13. These two teams, Damon, have met twice already. They met in the championship of the Triopia Varsity Tournament where Griggsville Perry won by about 10 points on a night that Triopia did not have Ryan Snow. A week ago, these two teams just played in Concord. It was a two-point basketball game where GP won in overtime. And yeah, and it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. As you mentioned, the first time when these two teams matched up, Triopia was without their 6-2 senior in Ryan Snow. He, he was back last week. Now, again, he's battling that ankle injury, so he's not back to 100%, but Rich Thompson will take a Ryan Snow at 75% over most guys here in the area. So big key for Triopia will be to come out and try to establish some presence early. They've got the height advantage against this Tornado squad, especially the 6'6 junior and K.J. Beck. So it's going to be important for the Tornadoes to come out and really establish themselves on defense, but try to get the ball going out on the fast break to get some points early. Jake Mueller, Aiden Nethery, Ryan Snow, Trevin Littleton, K.J. Beck, the five starters on the floor for Rich Thompson's Triopia Trojans. On the other side, the 24-8 and eight Griggsville Perry Tornadoes. This is a team that's won two regular season tournaments, Damon. They've beat Winchester West Central twice. They've beat Williamsville. This is a team, though, that still has a lot of questions to answer because some people just kind of wonder, are they pretenders or contenders? And I think we're going to find out tonight. Well, it's going to be a big key for them to come out and try to get the ball moving we saw the last few weeks when gp was playing at their best they had a lot of crisp ball movement as we talked about during the first game the first open shot isn't always the best shot you've got to find the shot that works best for you and really take a shot within the flow of the offense and that'll be big for griggsville perry to do this we saw when they were playing at their best on Saturday, that's how they were going on the offensive end. Wyatt Whip, Lipkeman, Lane Lipkeman, Dane McAllister, Garrett Woodward, Michael Myers, the five starters in the white and maroon and gold for the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes. Tip-off is up and falls into the hands of Garrett Woodward. We are off and running here in semifinal number two on Central Illinois Sports. Brian Shoemaker, Damon Emmerich, Gavin Hilgenbrink bringing you all the action here from Payson. Driving down to the baselines, Lane Lipkeman kicks it back out. Woodward will take an early three off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound comes down into the hands of K.J. Beck, the 6'6 junior who might be the X Factor here tonight for the Triopia Trojans. Working the basketball now back around to Trevin Littleton. He dishes it down now into Nethery. Nethery with the flowing locks goes up with the right hand. No good. Rebound comes down to Snow. He can't get it on the second chance. Third chance, no good. Snow gets two offensive rebounds. Can't get it on the third. Try a fourth. He'll get it up and good, and Ryan Snow, that's a confidence builder right there. 
as he gets a fourth chance opportunity, Damon, and gets it down for the first two points of the ball game. He's fouled by Dane McAllister. That's McAllister's first team foul number one. So we'll see Eli White check in. Yeah, we like to call that just padding the stats right there if you're Ryan Snow. Four offensive rebounds and gets the free throw to go. So he's got three. His team's got the early 3 nothing lead. One of these teams will take on Pace and Seymour in the championship game on Friday as they have just upset the number one team in the state of Illinois. Myers with the basketball, kicks it back up to Wyatt Lipkeman, averaging 18 points a game. And he's had some high scoring affairs for this Tornadoes team this season, including a 30 point effort over Pace and Seymour at homecoming just about two weeks ago. Myers with the basketball, it's his own look here from the Trojans as he gets a pick from Woodward, bounce pass into Lane Lipkeman. Runner from eight fit with the left hand is no good. Rebound comes down to Ryan Snow. Pushing the tempo now, this is Mueller. Down into the corner, it's Nethery. Nethery's three ball is up and good. Aiden Nethery has stepped in and filled some big roles in the absence of snow. GP with the 6-0 deficit early on here in the ball game as Wyatt Lipkin has it to get the offense set. Gets it to Myers. Myers puts up the three and gets it to go. So GP cuts into the deficit early on. 6-3 to three ball game here on the Trucks LLC scoreboard as we work it around on the three-quarter court press from Grigsville Perry. Snow with the basketball. Cross-court pass over to Trevin Littleton, the senior, who's seen some extended minutes here in the latter half of the season. Back up at the top of the volleyball line was Mueller. Now they kick it down short corner to Nethery. Pass almost tipped away, and now Snow gets his hands on it. Around the perimeter, Triopia goes. Now they work it into the big man, guarded by Eli White. 5.55 left to go. Three ball from Snow. Rattles around the friendly rims at Payson Seymour. Snow knocks down a triple. It's 9-3 to three here in the early goings. Griggsville Perry back on the attack now. Wyatt Lipkeman with the basketball over on the left side. Eli White down on the post. Myers in the far corner. Lane Lipkeman now back to Michael Myers as Eli flashes into the high elbow. Cross court back over to Wyatt Lipkeman. Down into the corner to Woodward. He's guarded out by Snow. 526 left to go here in the first quarter. With the basketball now is Myers. He'll fire up a three. Myers in and out, no good. Rebound comes down to the hands of Garrett Woodward. Second chance here for the Tornadoes. Driving into the lane, Wyatt Lipkeman. Three ball up from Lane Lipkeman in and out. No good. Rebound comes down to Ryan Snow. Mueller will push the tempo now here with five minutes left to go in the first quarter. With the basketball now is Mueller. Travels around midcourt, back over to Littleton. Now they kick it into the elbow. That's Winethery. Drives around Eli White, and they say that's going to be a blocking foul on Eli White on the ground. That's going to be White's first team foul number two against the Tornadoes. Checking into the basketball game will be Dane McAllister for Grigsville Perry. Checking back in for Triopia will be Caleb Carpenter, the 5'8 sophomore. With the basketball, now they get it back up to Carpenter. He tries to drive around Lane Lipkin and almost gets it stolen away. Now they get it to Netherick. Back up at the volleyball line. This is Mueller. Snow with the basketball. Nethery floating around the free throw line. Grigsville Perry in this traditional 2-3 zone that we have seen all season long. It's a three ball up and no good from Carpenter. Rebound comes down to the hands of Myers. Grigsville Perry pushing the tempo once again. Now back top of the key. Lipkeman over to Lipkeman. 4.26 left to go here in the first quarter. A much slower pace at the start of this one, Damon, than we saw in the first semifinal. Wyatt Lipkeman drives in on the weave offense. Nothing there as they get it to McAllister on the right side. Now kicks it back over to Wyatt Lipkeman. Pretty stagnant right now on offense are the Tornadoes. They've got to get some crisp passes to really get this defense moving. Three ball from Myers off the back of the rim. Floats around. Rebound comes down into the hands of Ryan Snow. That's his seventh rebound already of the ball game. Seven. Seven. Not seven. Seven. Wow. And he goes up with a quick two, and that is going to be a timeout for the Grigsville Perry Tornadoes. Ryan Snow gets the early deuce. It's 11-3. to three. Triopia with the early lead. We're back in 30 seconds. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house. Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. 3.52 first quarter action. GP takes a timeout after they 
trail 11 to 3. Triopia has come out and been the aggressor in this one. And they are putting the Tornadoes on their heels. Grigsville Perry looks to respond out of a Garrett White timeout as Wyatt Lipkin has the basketball for the Tornadoes. He gets it out top to Dane McAllister. Three-pointer from him in and out, no good. Rebound comes down to Aiden Nethery. And he'll get the ball off to Mueller, who will push the ball into the front court for the Trojans. He finds right wing, that's Carpenter, back out top to Mueller. He'll look to reset the offense for the Trojans. 3.22 left to go here in the first quarter. Trojans on the attack. Snow, lob pass up to Nethery, almost a little too high. The big man brings it down, goes up with a fake. And they say he'll get called for the steps underneath the basket. It'll be a turnover on the Trojans. We are first turnover of the ball game. Nethery skied high for that one. We've seen him get up. He's got some hops. You've seen a couple of highlights on Twitter where he was able to do a nice little spin move and up off two feet. Myers, three ball. Off the front of the rim, no good. Snow comes down with it. GP one of seven from behind the arc here in the first quarter of play. With the basketball now, kicks it back up. This is Nethery. Tries to dish it down to the big man. He kicks it out off the backboard as uh, Beck really was in a position to probably score that one and tried to get the kick out pass. Instead, he throws it off the backboard. When you're 6'6 and throw an overhead pass underneath the basket, you don't have a whole lot of room right there. And uh, That's true. Just a good thing right there, the ball didn't come right back at him because it had some velocity on it as it went out of bounds. Littleton will check back in for the Trojans here on the next dead ball as Wyatt Lipkeman has it. Myers on the curl, nothing there as they get it to McAllister, top of the key. He drives in against Beck, forced the shot up high off the glass and no good. Nethery comes down with the rebound. Trojans up by eight here in the early goings of this second semifinal from Payson. Snow, three ball from the left wing is good. Ryan Snow gets the friendly rims again. He's got 11 points here in the first half. And it's a 14-3 lead for Triopia. Myers drives into the lane, forces it up with the right hand, and they say that'll be on the ground, and it'll be a foul against Triopia. Going to be whistled against Aiden Nethery. That'll be Nethery's first, and it'll be team foul number one against the Trojans. Littleton will check back in for Triopia. The first time we see Flint Kirk tonight, the six-foot sophomore forward, number five, checks in for GP. So in case you were wondering at home, Ryan Snow's ankle appears to be just fine for this Triopia Trojan no squad. Kidding. Tornadoes with the basketball, two minutes to go here in the first quarter. With the basketball now, Lane Lipkeman kicks it cross court over to the left side to Wyatt. He tried to find Eli White inside, nothing there as the Tornadoes are overloaded on the left side. Myers Trojan, with it. Trojan have done a nice job here. We've seen them alternate between the 3-2 defense and the man-to-man. -man. They're in that 3-2 right now as down low goes to Eli White. White puts it on the floor, bucket up and good. So Eli White's got two, and you don't see him look to score very often. That's two points the Tornadoes probably didn't expect to get, and two points they may need here in the basketball game later on. 14-5 lead on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Triopia trying to push now, stolen away from Myers. Myers gets fouled from Littleton on the take foul to avoid the layup. Good foul right there by the Trojans as it prevented the fast break. Littleton's whistled for his first. It is the second team foul against the Trojans. Myers will be the trigger man here on the far side. It's still a pretty packed house here, Damon Emmerich, as you've got a lot of Payson fans sticking around with, uh, deservingly so, they're kind of basking in the afterglow here a little bit on their own floor. Well, and they've got more skin in the game for Friday night as Wyatt Lipkin spin move up and no good. Rebound comes down to Mueller. With the basketball now, Carpenter, three ball from the right wing, probably a little bit of an early shot. Now here comes Wyatt Lipkin in transition. Goes up against Nethery. He tries to swat it away. May have got a tip on it, and Nethery comes down with it. Called a block for Aiden Nethery. Snow walking across the time stripe here with one minute to go. Nine point lead for Triopia. Mueller with the basketball. Far out over on the pace and Seymour logo on the far side. With the basketball now over on the left side is Carpenter. Littleton with it tries to find Nethery. Snow also down with him working the short corners. High flash from Snow gets tipped away from Eli White. Gets picked back up now by Carpenter. 37 seconds left here in the first. Snow with the basketball. Trojans all around the perimeter. Now they get it into Nethery. He's guarded out by Flint. Kirk tries to go baseline. Nothing there. And they say that's going to go off Kirk and remain Trojans basketball. Beck will check back in for the Trojans. As we'll see Littleton take a seat. 27 and a half seconds left to play. First quarter action on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Trojans with the 14-5 lead and the basketball. Down to the corner, now they get it back up. Nethery, three ball from the top of the key is good. Triopia, red hot from outside. It's a 17 to five lead for the Trojans. 20 seconds, seconds left here. Biggest lead of the ball game so far for Triopia. 
Lane Lipkeman now with the basketball. Ten seconds left to go in the first frame. Kicks it now. Myers on the elbow. Tries to get the nice pass into Wyatt Lipkeman. Nowhere to go. He's got to kick it back out. Myers, three ball, top of the key. No good. Eli White gets the offensive rebound. He can't finish either. And the Trojans head to the quarter break up by 12. It's a 17-5 lead. We're back in 60 seconds here on Central Illinois Sports. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. We will pay the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. It is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring. So the peace of mind of that's very nice. Triopia has been hot from behind the arc in the first quarter. They lead the Grigsville Perry Tornadoes 17 to 5 here at the end of the first frame. Damon Emmerich has a quick look at your shooting percentage. After one quarter of play, Grigsville Perry 2 of 13 from the floor for 15%, just 1 of 8 from behind the three-point line, whereas Triopia is 4 of 6 from behind the arc on their way to shooting 6 of 12 from the field for 50% on their way to a 17-5 first quarter lead and Trojans will have the basketball to start the second quarter. Austin Struby, a 5'11 junior guard, wearing number three, checks in for Triopia during the quarter break as it's going to be Struby, Carpenter, Mueller, Beck, and Nethery out on the floor here for the Trojans. Both Lipkamans, McAllister, Kirk, and Myers on the floor for GP. With the basketball now down into the corner is Mueller. Tries to find Beck inside, gets tipped away by McAllister. It'll be a turnover on the Trojans, their fourth of the basketball game. Wyatt Lipkeman with it now on the right wing, kicks it back to McAllister. Now Lipkeman tries to drive baseline, nothing there against Struby. Garrett White, we can hear him from up here saying, you are forcing a lot. We'll see why the Tornadoes respond offensively here. Kicks it back over to the right wing. This Trojan zone, though, Damon, it's a little bit to get through here tonight in the 2-3 set for Grigsville Perry, as now it looks like it's going to be a foul on the floor for Triopia. Looks like they'll get back for that foul, so that'll be his first third team foul, but the best way to beat his own is quick, crisp passes, and that has not been seen by Grigsville Perry yet as Ryan Snow back into the ballgame for the Trojans. Myers will be the trigger man. He'll kick it now out to Kirk. They'll quickly whip it around the perimeter as Myers tries to flash on the baseline. Nothing there. They get it back to Wyatt Lipkeman. His three ball from the right wing, no good. Comes down into the hands of Ryan Snow, who's had a heck of a first half so far on the rebounding and scoring side. Snow's one rebound away from being a double-double in this ballgame. Down into Beck. Beck gets up with it. He'll get fouled as he drew two guys up in the air. And we'll see who the foul gets called on for Grigsville Perry. It'll be the third team foul against Grigsville Perry as Flint Kirk's going to be whistled for his first. So it's going to send K.J. Beck to the line looking for his first points of the ball game. His team's got the 17-5 advantage here. Early on in the second quarter, Beck's first attempt is good. Want to remind you about Illini Community Hospital, serving the community since 1942 with excellent health care services, serving the Pike County area and beyond for over 50 years. Learn more about their services at IlliniHospital.org. Garrett Woodward checked back in for the Tornadoes as... Flint Kirk takes a seat. Beck tells us the bank's still open as he gets the line drive free throw to go in, and it's up to a 14-point Trojans advantage. Don't know many bankers that were past 430, Damon, except for you. Now with the basketball over to the left wing is Wyatt Lipkeman. Strikes a couple of dribbles, now kicks it down into Myers. Myers works it around the top of the key. This is Lane Lipkeman. Gets caught in double traffic. He's got to get rid of it. Now tries to get it away to McAllister. He doesn't get there. And here comes Mueller on the steal. Larceny in the layup for Jake Mueller. Two more points. It's a 21-5 lead here, Damon. Triopia is up and pouring it on GP. With the basketball now. Wyatt Lipkeman kicks it over to Myers. 6.15 left to go here in the first half. This zone is giving GP fits, Damon. And there doesn't seem to be an answer in sight quite yet. Well, if you're playing against a zone, you've got to try to find somebody to get middle of the zone. We haven't really seen that out of GP. They're just playing four out, one guy standing down low, and not much movement, and that's the best way you can be for a zone defense. Myers' is three falls short on the rim, comes down to the hands of Beck, and now Triopia is going to try and extend the 16-point lead. Mueller will bring it across the time stripe, met by Lane Lipkeman. Now back over to Austin Struby, and the Trojans will reset. 
Snow with the basketball, flashing across to the left side. Nothing there. They tried to get it into Beck. Instead, it falls into the hands of Nethery. He goes up and gets fouled, and he'll knock it down for a chance for the old passion three-point play. He's going to be fouled by Michael Myers. That's Myers' first, fourth team foul. Nethery will go to the line looking to complete the and one. Aiden Nethery has eight points in this one. Nethery on the all-hair team here in the Payson Seymour Regional. I just want to tell you, we did an all-hair team on Twitter from the state tournament this year, Damon. Last year when it was in Champaign, it looked fantastic. We had some guys with some luscious locks and uh, feathered and lethal. Feathered and lethal. And now it's a 24-5 lead, and Garrett White is going to take a timeout. We will take it, too. Triopia up big, 24-5. It's a full timeout. We're back in 60 seconds. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful and historic city that is Pittsfield, Illinois, a community that feels like home. Home to over 4,000 residents, a progressive and growing community serves as an amazing place to live, learn, work, and play. With civic, charitable, family, and recreational activities available, you'll never be bored here. Attend an event or festival, play some disc golf on our new championship course, spend the day fishing, or even catch a Civil War reenactment. As a community driven by success, Pittsfield provides numerous incentives to assist citizens and local businesses. Our goal in Pittsfield is to truly advance and prosper. Staying healthy is made easy here with access to doctors, dentists, and other medical specialists throughout the community. People come to Pittsfield for a variety of reasons. Stately historical homes, an abundance of natural resources, hunting, scenic areas along the Illinois and Mississippi rivers, festivals, recreational opportunities, and much more. People stay in Pittsfield simply because life here is great. Picture yourself in Pittsfield today. Tornadoes take the timeout as now they trail by 19 points here in the first half. 5.30 left to go. It's a 24-5 lead for the Triopia Trojans. Tornadoes have the basketball trying to cut into this one. McAllister with it, driving around, guarded by Snow. Now it's a man look here from Triopia. Wyatt Lipkeman drives in, goes up with it, and it's going to roll over the top of the rim. Wyatt Lipkeman gets in the scoring column. It's a 24-7 ball game on the man-to-man -man look there. And, Damon, that's something that GP can excel at. Wyatt Lipkeman, Lane Lipkeman, those guys are able to penetrate in those man-to-man -man situations and get themselves short looks into the free-throw line. Yeah, you've just got to give themselves the opportunity, and the way to do that is open up driving lanes by Chris Passes, putting the ball on the floor and attacking the rim, not just staying stagnant out on the offensive end. Nethery got it at the free-throw line. It gets tipped away. Wyatt Lipkeman comes up with it. Up and under with the left hand. Wyatt Lipkeman gets the steal on the layup. It's a 24-9 ball game. 4.40 left to go here, and now Rich Thompson says, let's talk about it. Maybe. Nope. They're no, it's a whistle. foul. Yep. Michael Myers is going to be whistled for his second. Fifth team foul against Grigsville Perry, but again, Myers second. We've talked about it before in previous broadcasts, Damon. The biggest thing that GP can uh, hurt themselves with is at the foul line because this is not a deep roster. This is a team that does not have a lot of kids. They have no seniors. They have no freshmen. This is a very, very compact roster of sophomores and juniors right now. Now they get it into Beck. Beck goes up with it against Myers, and he's going to count it for two. K.J. Beck knocks it down. It's a 26-9 ball game. Tornado's back on the attack. Myers over to Wyatt Lipkman on the right side. 4.15 left to go here in the first half. Wyatt Lipkeman drives in at the elbow, picks it back up. He's got to get rid of it, finds brother Lane. Myers drives in now. Myers is going to force it up and gets blocked by Nethery. And it goes off the hands of Lane Lipkeman. Is he trying to just pick it up on the dribble and found himself caught at the sideline? It'll be a Tornado's turnover in Trojans basketball. Flint Kirk's going to check back in now for Michael Myers. And, uh, Damon, there just hasn't, unfortunately, if you're a Tornadoes fan, been a lot going right here in the first half. No, there's not. Right now, as you trail by 17, 26-9, four minutes to play here in the first half. The big key is you've still got 20 minutes left to go in this ball game, so you've got to find a way to work your way back into it as the Trojans have an unforced turnover in the backcourt there. Find a way to try to get this to a 10-point game at the half as Kirk goes out, Myers checks back in. Myers has those two fouls. We'll also see Woodward back into the ball game. Eli White takes a seat for the Tornadoes. 3.55 left here in the first half. Myers with the basketball on the right wing. Tornadoes work it around the perimeter over to Woodworth. Now back up top of the key. Now back to the left of Lane Lipkman. He quickly finds Wyatt inside. Kicks it back out. McAllister cross-court pass. Tornadoes, nice passing movement here. They'll try and reset with 3.36 left to go in the second quarter. 
Still going to have better spacing right here if you're the Tornadoes. With the basketball wide left, a nice move from McAllister to Myers. Myers goes up with it, count the basket, and he'll go to the line for a chance for a three-point play. Foul's going to go against Ryan Snow. That'll be Snow's first, fourth team foul against the Trojans. White back in, Woodward takes a seat. Coach Garrett White doing a little bit of offense for defense here early on. Myers will go to the charity stripe. It's a 15-point lead. Now make it not 14 as now the basketball goes in and out of the rim. Snow fought for it, thought he got pushed, and instead it's going to go out of bounds and it'll be off the Trojans' GP basketball as Woodward will come back in for White. S Snow asking about it, thought he got pushed, but now he'll ask to clean up some perspiration because it's his. Because he says, I got knocked to the floor. Seventh turnover against the Trojans, and that's really been what's kept GP in this ball game. And at the 325 mark of the first half, Ryan Snow already has a double-double for the Trojans. We told you early on, four offensive rebounds on the first possession for Triopia, but he's done a nice job, really controlled the glass. He had a quick 11 points. He hasn't scored here for about the last six minutes of game action, but the Trojans have done a nice job spreading it out as he and Aiden Nethery combined for 20 of their team's 26. Myers now with the basketball, gets it out of the short corner. McAllister floating around the free throw line. Over to Woodward on the right side. 3-12 left to go here in the first half. Tornado's being a little bit patient, trying to cut into a 15-point deficit. Triopia now back in the zone look after flashing a little bit of man-to-man -man a couple of times. Now a little bit of a collision there with Carpenter and Lipkeman. Lipkeman picks it back up. Back over to the left side. Three ball from Lane Lipkeman, no good, and here comes Nethery in transition. Both Lipkeman's trying to track him down, and now they say Nethery will step on the baseline as Lane Lipkeman was able to chase him down and tip it away. It'll be a turnover on Triopia. That's their eighth turnover. 2.49 left to go here in the first half. GP 1 of 11 from behind the line. Triopia 4 of 6 in this ballgame so far from the three-point line. That makes a big difference in things. Wyatt Lipkeman tries to penetrate. Nothing there as he was guarded by Mueller. Back now on the right wing. This is Wyatt Lipkeman. Tries to pick it up. Triopia has done a really good job, Damon, because GP loves... This weave offense as Myers is going to get called for the elbow. And that's going to be Michael Myers' third foul at the 226 mark of the second quarter. It's a risky run when you've got two fouls, but when you're trailing by 15, you've got to have your scorers out on the floor. But Myers is going to have to go to the bench with those three fouls. His team trailing 26 to 11. 226 to play here in the first half. Well, Tornadoes like to do that weave offense. They like to get into that free throw line. And you've really seen Triopia. Now it's a steal for Grigsville Perry. Wyatt Lipkeman goes up against Snow and now almost tipped up. And it's going to be a nice high up the backboard knock for Wyatt Lipkeman. 26 13 here with 210 left to go. Tornadoes trying to cut a little fire under themselves and get back into this thing and make a game out of it by halftime. Carpenter with the basketball. Now into Nethery. Almost tipped away from Eli White. Now this is Snow. Drives baseline, and he'll get bumped by Eli White and stop play. So it's going to send Snow to the line for the one and bonus as Eli White's whistled for his second. Team foul number seven. Snow has 11 points. He's one for one from the line here in this one. As Flint Kirk takes a seat, Woodward back in for the Tornadoes. Remind you about Pike County Express, locally owned family newspaper serving Pike County since 1991. Check it out each Wednesday on a newsstand near you. That is the Pike County Express newspaper. Snow can't get it to go, but Beck's going to get the offensive rebound and then throw it away. Lane Lipkeman in running. Now he's going to draw the block. He'll get the basket, and Lane Lipkeman's going to go to the free throw line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Foul's going to be whistled against Caleb Carpenter. That's his first, fifth team foul. Woodward to the bench, Flint Kirk back in as Lane Lipkeman at the line. Just got his first two points of the ball game and a chance to make this a 10-point deficit for the Tornadoes if he can get this free throw to go. Shot is up, and it is good. Tornadoes on a little bit of a run here. It's a 10-point basketball game. They were down by as many as 15. Now it's down to 10. Can they get it any closer here on their leaning 145? Snow, right wing, three ball. Off the side of the rim, no good. Wyatt Lipkeman with the rebound. Here comes GP once again. Now they get it down to Blaine Lipkeman. McAllister thought about the three, but he'll drag the foot. And they say that'll be a traveling violation and a turnover against the Tornado. Shane McAllister struggling with confidence right there. That's a shot that he needs to put up. Even if he doesn't make it, Dane can knock those threes down. 
But as it is, turnover against Grigsville Perry. That's their fourth. Triopia with 10 in the first half. And at 90 seconds to go in the half, Triopia with the lead and the basketball. And they'll go to the other end to shoot the and or the one and one as foul picked up about 65 feet away from the bucket. Lane Lipkin whistled for his first. Woodward will check back in the basketball game. Flint Kirk will take a seat here as Mueller will go to the charity line. It's a 26-16 basketball game. We'll break down halftime scoring and more on the Little Jess Halftime Show as you're watching it live here on Central Illinois Sports. First one's up and good for Mueller, making it a 27-16 ball game. Mueller's got three points. His team's lead is back out to 11. And Grigsville Perry's got to do a good job here of boxing out on the free throw in case Mueller misses. They don't want to allow a Trojan offensive rebound. Mueller's shot is up, and he gets it to go. Give him four, and it's back to a 12-point Triopia lead. 1.23 left to go here in the first half. Lipkin to White. He's got it in a place that Eli White probably not meant to handle the ball as he got it up at the volleyball line. Wyatt Lipkin now on the right wing as they move it around the perimeter. This is Woodward guarded out by Carpenter. They've got to kick it back to Wyatt Lipkin back at half court. 107 left to go here in the first half. Now back up to Woodward, to Lane Lipkin. They try to look at McAllister, nothing there on the right side. Got to have better spacing there as Triopia had one guy guarding three tornadoes. Driving in as Lane Lipkin tries to go up against Beck, and they say that'll draw the block, and he'll get to go to the free throw line, Will Lane Lipkin. That'll be Beck's second, sixth team foul against the Trojans. So Lipkin back to the line, Lane Lipkin that is. He's got three points looking to cut into this 28-16 deficit. 50 seconds left to play. Lipkin's first is good. Kirk in, Woodward to the bench for Grigsville Perry. On the other side, Littleton back in. Beck takes a seat with those two fouls. And we'll see if Triopia tries to hold for one shot as they've got the 28-18 lead with 50 seconds to play here, first half action. Nethery will be the inbounds man. He'll find Mueller. 80 feet away is 47 seconds left here to Littleton. Cross-court pass over to Snow now. Now they quickly get through the zone. Here comes Nethery. He's going to go up against McAllister. McAllister loses that battle. Nethery wins it. It's a 30-18 basketball game here. 35 seconds left to go on the tough play from Aiden Nethery. Wyatt Lipkman now back to Lane Lipkman. Garrett White barks out some halftime instructions here for the might be the last possession of the second quarter. 22 seconds, 21 and 20. Rich Thompson says just hold tight, fellas. Yeah, if you're Rich Thompson, you're happy right here. You got a chance to go into the halftime lead with no less than a nine-point lead. And that's if Grigsville Perry scores on this last possession. Eli White with the basketball. Wyatt Lipkin slashes through. Nothing there. Now tries to get out on the curl screen. Nothing there either. Lane Lipkin, spin move into the lane up with the left hand. He'll draw the contact and go to the free throw line at the buzzer. Will Lane Lipkin on the spin move and the shot. It's going to go against Caleb Carpenter. That's Carpenter's second. So it sends Lane Lipkman back to the line. He's three for three from there in the first half. So no time left on the clock. 30-18, Grigsville Perry trailing. Lipkman's first free throw attempt is good. He's got six in the contest. Right after this, we'll get to the Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram halftime show. We'll take a two-minute break and get you halftime stats and more as the second free throw is good. Triopia heads to the locker room, up by 10, 20 to 30 over Grigsville Perry. We're back in two minutes with halftime stats and more here on the Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep Dodge Jam ram a -Lam halftime show. There's a road that makes all the difference, the difference between the good and the great, a road less traveled for the few who can handle the grind, one of hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership, with a respect for heritage and tradition and a willingness to adapt. At Little Jess, we travel that road every day because we believe in that difference. And we dare our competition to try and keep up. Little Jess, serving the tri-state area since 1969. Uh-huh, yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for Essentials. Did you find everything you need? No, apparently not, thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. At Game Masters in Quincy, we're passionate about the outdoors. 
Shooting is one of our favorite pastimes. When it comes to guns and ammo, think Game Masters. They have new guns, used guns, gun safes, and gun accessories. And be sure to head over to GameMastersOutdoors.com to check out our great selection. Clothing, fishing, hunting, gifts, and more. At Game Masters in Quincy, we're passionate about the outdoors. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields and your situation or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Hey, Dad. We're going for a run. Uh, well, just be careful. Make sure you're not running alone. Another Strangers. virus was blocked. Are you doing an online quiz? This one's going to tell me my IQ. All these quizzes are for us to get your passwords for everything. How do you not know that? How long have you been doing these quizzes for? How old are you? 11. 11 years. How do you not know how old I am? All right, well, we're going to go for a run and watch for cars and strangers, and you change all your passwords so your identity isn't wiped out. A bit dramatic. I'd really like to know my IQ, though. Welcome you back here on the Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Halftime Show. Little Jess in Quincy, Illinois, the place to go for your next vehicle purchase. Their staff is committed to making the car buying process simple and making sure each customer's needs are satisfied. Learn more at littlejessmotor.com or stop by and see them at 3431 Main Street in Quincy. Triopia led by as many as 19 in the first half. Gregsville Perry's been able to cut it to a 10-point deficit as the Trojans head into the locker room leading 30-20 here in the second semifinal tonight. Damon Emmerich's been playing along the stat sheets all night. He's got some initial statistics for us here from the first two quarters. Well, as Brian told you, after one quarter of play, Triopia had the lead 17-5. to The Trojans in that first half of play led by as many as 19. We've had no lead changes, haven't been tied yet in the ball game. Ten turnovers in the first half of play for Triopia, just four for Griggsville Perry. Griggsville Perry in the first half of play shooting 7 of 23 from the field for 30%. But of that, just one of 11 from behind the three-point line, so just 9% from the three-point line for the Tornadoes. They are five of six from the charity stripe, whereas for Triopia in that first half of play, they shot 10 of 17 from the field for 59%, six of 10 from the two, four of seven from behind the three-point line, and they are six of seven from the charity stripe. Again, Triopia led by as many as 19. They had the 24-5 advantage Looked like we might be pushing a running clock here in this one, but Griggsville Perry managed to claw their way back into it, trailing by 10 here at the half, and I think that's really about as much as Coach Garrett White could have asked for for his Tornado squad. Tornadoes have struggled a little bit against the Trojan zone look. They threw a man-to-man -man at GP a couple of times, and GP was able to attack that, went back to the zone, but GP has been able to find themselves on the beneficiary of a couple of unforced turnovers, a couple of forced turnovers, and have able to get themselves to the free throw line here. We're going to step away for a couple more minutes to tell you about some of the wonderful sponsors that have brought us to the 1A Regional here at Payson. When they come back, Damon Emmerich's got individual scoring and more on the Little Jess Halftime Show. When I'm driving in my car with my family, I've got two kids and a wife, and four of us are driving in a car, we literally get excited when we see a dot truck. It's actually a sense of pride. Why I would encourage anyone to work a dot. We take care of each other. The company continues to grow and expand. That to me is what brings me to work every day and that, that I enjoy. Diversity, culture, family, all of those things, if you want them, you should be a dad.
For nearly 40 years, the Niebuhr Funeral Home has been serving our area with professionalism and compassion. This is our business, our hometown. You can be assured we take great personal pride in serving your family in your time of loss. We're locally owned. We're your friends and neighbors. We care about you and your family. Niebuhr Funeral Home, the locations in Pittsville and Barrie, serving our community with compassion and respect. Cole Best Systems Builders for all your insulation needs. We are a full-service insulation contractor offering both open and closed cell spray foam, blown cellulose, and fiberglass installation. Best Systems has two BPI certified professionals ready to inspect your home or business today. You may qualify for incentives through the American Act on Energy program. Call Scott or Michael at 217-285-6005 for your free estimate or visit us online at GoBestSystems.com and start saving money on your energy bill today. Pressures on you would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Pressures on you. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local. Pressures on you, 506 Westwood. Camp Point, Illinois. Welcome you back on the Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Halftime Show. Just about three minutes until we get to second half action. Damon Emmerich's got a look at your individual scoring statistics. For the Grigsville Perry Tornadoes, they had four guys in the scoring column in the first half. Eli White with two. Michael Myers had five points, but he picked up that third foul at 225 to play in the first half. Wyatt Lipkin with six, and Lane Lipkin led the Tornadoes in scoring with seven points in the first half. For Triopia, they're scoring in the first half. Four guys in the scoring column, four points apiece for Jake Mueller and K.J. Beck, 11 points for Aiden Nethery, and 11 points for Ryan Snow to go along with 10 rebounds. So Snow with a double-double in the first half as he and Nethery paced their Trojans on the way to a 30-20 advantage at the half here on the Little Jess Halftime Show. It's been a fun one so far here tonight. As you were watching us earlier, you got to watch the number one team in the state, New Berlin, go down at the hands of the host school, Payson Seymour, and what's probably one of the biggest postseason upsets in quite a while across the state of Illinois. One of these two teams is going to meet them in Friday's championship game. Triopia trying to close it out as they've got a 10-point lead here at half. We're going to take a two-minute break. When we come back, it's second half action live here from Payson Seymour High School. You're watching it all live on Central Illinois Sports. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at West Town Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. Since 1921, Farmer State Bank of Camp Point has been a vital part of our community's history. We are proud of our growth, our community leadership, and our success, which is only possible because of all those who shared this journey with us. We are grateful to the generations of loyal customers, families, businesses, employees, officers, and directors who have shaped not only our story, but our entire communities. Thank you. We look forward to serving you and your future generations for the next 100 years. Farmer State Bank and Camp Point, together we are a strong United community. Getting you ready for the third quarter. It'll be the five starters for the Triopia Trojans who lead by 10 points over Grigsville Perry. That is Mueller, Nethery, Littleton, Beck, and Snow. For Grigsville Perry, it'll be Myers, Lipkeman, Lipkeman, McAllister, and Eli White will get the start over Garrett Woodward here as we start the third frame. Triopia comes back out in the 2-3 zone as Lane Lipkeman brings the basketball across for Grigsville Perry's first possession. They get it to McAllister, dumps it down low to Myers. He goes up with it, layup try no good as it gets rebounded by Nethery, and here comes Triopia. Got the possession that Grigsville wanted there, just couldn't convert on the basket. Cross-court pass now over to Littleton. Looks for Nethery across the free throw line, nothing there. Gets it over to Snow on the right side. Kicks it back, Snow, he's knocked down and had a nice half, knocked down a few triples here for Triopia. With the basketball now, Snow tries to lob it into Nethery, tried to get it to Beck or somebody in blue. Nobody knows who it was supposed to go to. Littleton somehow able to recover it for Triopia. Now he gets it to Snow, and there's going to be a... They're going to say he... Out of bounds. 
on the line there as he was uh, Triopia fans wanted a foul call and they didn't get one Woodward will check in might have fought through a little contact might there. Have fought through a little contact and now Eli White's gonna sit down couldn't keep both feet in bounds no. if my wife is watching our Walmart delivery is showing up in just a second that's what my Apple watch tells me seven minutes left to go here in the third quarter well you haven't got a text message all night but you get the important you get the important ones that's right Myers with the basketball, now back to Lane Lipcomit. The McAllister free throw line tries to double, get through double traffic and he'll get fouled on the floor by Triopia. Foul's gonna be whistled against Jake Mueller. That's his first, first team foul of the half. Triopia with the bas or Tornadoes with the basketball after the foul. They get it now to McAllister. Picks it up on the right elbow. Now back to the perimeter as Wyatt Lipkowin tries to work on the baseline. Lane Lipkowin drives into the traffic. Now back out to Myers. Three ball from the right wing. Nothing there. It's going to go on the hands and fly out of bounds. The officials say it'll be Triopia basketball. Kirk and Eli White back in. Myers and Woodward take a seat. Garrett White does the offense for defense here as much as he possibly can, especially with Michael Myers being in foul trouble with those three fouls. With the basketball now, this is Mueller. He'll bring it across, tries to get it across the time stripe to Littleton. 6.30 left to go. Now they get it, and here comes to Nethery. Gets tipped away from Eli White. Basketball will go out of bounds and remain with the Trojans. Still a really interesting atmosphere in here, Damon, as uh, Everybody kind of watching this one play out and still in the afterglow of what we saw earlier tonight. It's been, a, been an interesting atmosphere here. You know, we've, we've got two teams playing hard and everyone's still just kind of chattering about what happened about an hour ago. With the basketball now is Beck. Kicks it back out now. Snow tries to drive right side. Gets stopped by Flint Kirk. Littleton with it. Now into the corner is Nethery. Fakes out Eli White. Goes up baseline and he'll get fouled on a really nice move by Aiden Nethery to go to the free throw line. Dane McAllister will be whistled for the foul. That'll be his second. Team foul number one, so it'll send Nethery to the line. Nethery's got 11 points. He's one for one from the charity stripe in this one. Looking to give us our first points of the second half for either team, and he does just that. LSSD Trucking and 3D Leasing. 217-285-2808. Trucking for all of your needs. See the Dunham Boys and their professional team for LSSD Trucking and 3D Leasing. Nethery at the line. He's got 12. His team's lead is out to 11. Second free throw for him is on the way, and it's good. He has had a heck of a month here with the absence of K.J. Snow, or it's not Snow, Ryan Snow, excuse me, on that ankle injury that he suffered during the Triopia tournament when Grigsville Perry won that tournament on a 4-0 run that week for GP. With the basketball is Lane Lipkman, drives in on the weave, nothing there. They kick it over to the right side now to Wyatt. Now Lane drives in. He goes up against two defenders up off the back of the rim. Nice contesting there by K.J. Beck. 542 left to go here in the third. Snow with the basketball, cross court over to Mueller. With it now, they get it back to Snow. Now they find Beck at the corner. Kicks it back out, Littleton now down to the short corner. Aiden Nethery, nice stop and pop for Aiden Nethery. Nice ball movement for Triopia. You can get a guy to knock that basket down at the short corner, Damon. That's a dangerous spot is Wyatt Lipkeman gets the answer. And Garrett White's going to take a timeout. We'll take it too. Triopia's up by a dozen, 34-22. We're back here in 30 seconds. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with a service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. Go Eagles! Tornadoes took the timeout after the basket from Wyatt Lipkeman. The team's traded baskets on a short corner jumper from Nethery, and then Wyatt Lipkeman was able to quickly get a layup in transition. GP will come out with full court pressure here as Nethery will be the trigger man. He's got the baseline to run if he wants it. Still a big crowd here tonight at Payson Seymour High School. Mueller back over now to Littleton. Littleton, nice basketball player, also a really nice uh, race car driver in the dirt track ranks. Shot from Snow is up and no good. Rebound comes down to Eli White. Here comes Wyatt Lipkeman in transition. This is where the Tornadoes excel. Now they try to find Kirk, nothing there. 
Lane Lipkeman drives in against Nethery. Kick back out to Wyatt Lipkeman. Three ball is good for Wyatt Lipkeman. GP gets in transition, and they're dangerous. It's a 34-25 basketball game. First time this deficit for GP has been in single digits in quite some time. Taking it from 19 down to 9. Lipkeman with the steal, dishes it to Lane. Shot up. No good, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Fouled by Jake Mueller. That's his second. Team foul number two. And before we have the free throws, we're going to have a timeout on the floor by Triopia, and we'll take it to 34-25. Triopia with the lead over Grigsville Perry. 4.41 to play. Third quarter action on the trucks. LLC scoreboard. We're back in a minute. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house. Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Timely application of crop nutrients based on soil test results and the individual yield goals is the focus of the agronomy team at Logan AgriService, Inc. Logan Ag delivers in hydrous ammonia, dry fertilizer, UAN, liquid starter, and our lineup of Logan Agri yield micronutrients direct from us to your field. Striving to get the right fertilizer products at the right place in the right field at the right time, that's Logan AgriService. For fertilizer and application services, call 1-800-LOGAN-AG or visit us online at loganag.com. Logan AgriService, serving agriculture since 1962. Back to live action as Lane Lipkeman eyes up the first of two free throws. It's good, making it a 34-26 basketball game. And just like that, Damon Emmerich, we're back down to an eight-point game. It was a 19-point deficit at one point for the Tornadoes as Littleton's going to replace Beck. It was a 19-point game, and the Trojans had it out to a 14-point lead here in this one. But Gregsville Perry's clawed their way back into it. Lane Lipkeman makes it a seven-point deficit as he hits a pair of free throws at the 34-27 lead for the Trojans if they have the basketball. Feels like the next four minutes are really going to determine this one. Mueller now down into Littleton. Tried to find Nethery. Nothing there as he was double teamed. Now they get it to him. He kicks it back out. Mueller, three ball from the left side. In and out. No good. Fight for the rebound. Comes down to the hands of Ryan Snow. He's got to get rid of it. And he goes up with it and he'll get fouled. And Ryan Snow will go to the free throw line. Fouled by Dane McAllister. So McAllister picks up his third. Second team foul against Griggsville Perry of the half, and you just can't have that right there if you're the Tornadoes. You can't have one Triopia Trojan out rebound three to four guys down low, and it results in Ryan Snow going to the line where he made his first. Woodward and Myers back into the ballgame. Kirk and McAllister take a seat for Griggsville Perry. Ryan Snow picks up his first points since the first quarter of play, but he gets both free throws to go. He's got 13. And it's back out to a nine-point lead for the Trojans as Strubby will check back in. Snow will get a little bit of a breather here, still working on his conditioning after missing some time there with an ankle injury. With the basketball now is Wyatt Lipkeman. Kicks it on the left side to Myers as GP works it around the top of the backcourt. Triopia still in the zone here. A little bit of a smaller lineup now for Triopia. Wyatt Lipkin with the basketball, gets the pick from Woodward, doesn't take it though, he gets checked hard by Struby. That's Carpenter, excuse me. With the basketball in the corner, Myers. Now to Lane Lipkeman, Garrett Woodward battling around the free throw line, trying to set picks. Myers drives baseline, goes in, thought about the layup, kicks it back out, Lane Lipkeman for the three, nothing there. Comes down into the hands of Nethery. Here comes Triopia in transition. Mueller now kicks it down into Struby. Back up to flailing Nethery in there. Mueller with the basketball, getting some pressure from Wyatt Lipkeman. Cross-court pass now, quickly moving the basketball here is Triopia. Now they get it to Nethery in the elbow, dives down into Littleton. He goes up with it, can't finish. Rebound comes down into the hands of Garrett Woodward. Here comes GP. 3.15 left to go. Wyatt Lipkeman tried to drive in, nothing there. Triopia has done one thing right above all else tonight. It has stopped the penetration game from Grigsville Perry. Lane Lipkeman now dribbles around. Three minutes left to go here in the third. Now to Myers. High elbow now kicks it down to Eli White. He almost loses it. Woodward, three ball from the right corner. Off the side of the rim and no good. And Nethery comes down with the rebound. Two to seventh to rebound. Triopia trying to win the rebounding game here tonight. 
win the rebounding game, and you've got a chance to beat Grigsville Perry. With it on the right side now is Carpenter. Takes a couple of dribbles, gets it to Nethery on the right elbow. He's triple teamed, got to get rid of it. Somebody's got to be open, it's Mueller. Mueller fires one up off the rim, no good. Nethery flies in for the rebound, he'll go up. He can't finish, gets his own tip in, and he'll get fouled and go to the free throw line on the third chance opportunity for the Trojans. Nethery's fouled by Eli White, his third team foul number three. And we know the Trojans have the size advantage. We talk about it over and over in this one, but second chance opportunities have killed the Tornadoes as Nethery's at the line where he gets the first to go. Nethery's now got 16. Brown County leads Illini Central 53-46 after three quarters in Lewistown. Illini Central upset the host school on Saturday in the quarterfinals. Jack and Charlie are still up at Camp Point Central tonight where Augusta Southeastern and Bushnell Prairie City are doing battle in the second semifinal as Camp Point won the first one easily over Menden Unity. Snow back into the game. Nethery takes a seat. So Triopia's lead back out to 11, 38-27. Triopia 12 of 13 from the free throw line in this one. So they've taken advantage of the free opportunities to score when they've had them. Tornadoes with the basketball, long three ball attempt from Wyatt Lipkman's good, almost counted for four. That's like that Ruffles four point basket in the NBA celebrity game. 38 to 30, two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Triopia with the lead in the basketball, trying to get through the full court pressure of Grigsville Perry. They got to get it across the time stripe, and they say they don't. It'll be a turnover on Triopia, and GP gets another chance to cut back into the eight point deficit. 13th turnover against the Trojans as Nethery will check back in for Triopia. Struby, is it Struby or Struby? Yes. Struby. <laughs> yes. We'll say it either way. You say it both right. You say it both ways, one's got to be right. With the basketball is Lane Lipman, 145 left to go here in the third. Gets it to Myers, who quickly kicks it back out. Now another long three from Wyatt Lipman. This one does not hit the mark and comes down into the hands of Snow. With the basketball is Mueller. He'll quickly push it across the time stripe to avoid a turnover again. With the basketball, Carpenter over to Littleton. Now they get it into Snow, short corner, and he tries to throw it away, and he does as it goes over the outstretched arms of Caleb Carpenter. It's the 14th turnover now against the Trojans. And if those start to pile up, Grigsville Derry will take advantage, Damon. That's one thing you can't let the Tornadoes do. Yeah, that's the 14th against the Trojans. Grigsville Perry, just four turnovers. But they do trail by eight with a minute 15 to play here in the third quarter. They have the basketball into the hands of Lane Lipkeman. McAllister with it, tried to find Myers on the high low, nothing there. He kicks it out in the corner to Wyatt Lipkeman. Working around the perimeter, this is Woodward. And now kicks it over to Lane Lipkeman. Wyatt with it in the right corner. Back up and tried to get it to McAllister, almost tipped away by Carpenter. GP recovers, 57 seconds left here in the frame. Right side now, Wyatt Lipkeman drives baseline. Gets past one defender, and he'll get bumped by Littleton, and they'll get the foul that time. Will Wyatt Lipkeman. That'll be Littleton's second, third team foul against the Trojans. Beck back in. Littleton takes a seat. See Kirk check back in for Grigsville Perry. Woodward takes a seat. 51.9 seconds to play. Third quarter action. Grigsville Perry inbounds. That's Myers to McAllister. Shot no good, but he'll go to the line to shoot two as he was fouled on the shot by Mueller. That'll be Mueller's third, fourth team foul against Triopia. Dane McAllister looking for his first point of the ball game. First one for him is short off the front of the rim, no good. Saturday, March 18th, the annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. Proceeds from the Memorial benefit Little League, Pikeland PE program, Lowry Park exercise equipment, and a whole lot more. Get signed up on the Ty Rylander Facebook page to get involved in that wonderful event. McAllister splits a pair. He'll go to the bench with three fouls. Eli White checks back in. Triopia basketball, seven-point lead, 51 seconds to play here, third-quarter action. And Carpenter will bring it into the front court. Struby is a text message we just got with the long U, Damon. We'll get it right. Foul's going to be called here on Grigsville Perry that looks to go against Flint Kirk. I think we got the pronunciation on this one correct. Snow will be the trigger man Snow. for the Trojans. <laughs> we, we get the easy ones right, folks. Not the best color man in the business for nothing. With the basketball, Snow back to Mueller. Back at the half-court line, 38 seconds left to go. 
Back wants it at the elbow. They won't give it to him that time as they'll keep it around the perimeter. Triopia will have the possession to start the fourth quarter here as well as they try to hold for one shot, but they're going to be called for a travel as Carpenter shuffled the feet before he could put it on the floor. 30, check that, 28.6 seconds. We'll see McAllister and Woodward back in. Kirk and White take a seat. On the other side, Struby into the ballgame for the Trojans. Mueller will take a seat for Rich Thompson squad. So GP with the basketball, trailing by seven, but a chance to cut into this deficit a little bit more, and it looks like they will try to hold for one shot here to end the third quarter against this 2-3 defense from the Trojans. 15 seconds left to go. Lane lifts him in the man with the basketball. 10 seconds. GP's got to start in motion here. Here they go. Now they get it over to Wyatt. Left him in down to McAllister into Myers. That play worked earlier. Didn't play that time. And now Myers is going to get fouled, though, with 3.1 seconds left. And he's going to go to the free throw line. He's fouled by Austin Struby. So that's Struby's first fifth team foul. So Michael Myers to the line. Go for one from there in the ball game. First one for him. Finds its way down. 38-32 basketball game. Kirk will come back in. McAllister will take a seat. GP's got to make sure they don't give up a long baseball pass here to end the third quarter as Myers gets them both to go. Eli White will come back in. That will give GP a chance to reset the defense here. Beck the man far back. Nethery the inbounds man. Snow closest to him for the inbounds try. 3.1 seconds left. Five-point deficit here for GP. Snow with it. He's going to get a three-quarter heave. And it goes off the right side of the glass. No good. We've reached the fourth quarter. Triopia leads by five over Grigsville Perry. 38-33. We're back with fourth quarter action here coming up in 60 seconds. Once or twice a year, I might get the cold or a flu. And my wife calls it the man flu. So, so you know what that is. What do I love about our team? We have a good chemistry. We all work together. I mean, come on. I've got the best job in the world. Sometimes they say, oh, I like to do handstands. Yeah, I taught Brian how to do the handstand. That's all right. <laughs> and every day, I mean, it's a fun day. Yeah, it definitely makes me proud to be here. From our trucks, to their lunch trays, to your local hospital, to your favorite pub, and to your kitchen table. For more than 60 years, Dot Foods and Dot Transportation have been stocking the shelves of your hometown. Sure, we've grown a lot, but at our core, we're still small town, family run businesses that care about our communities and the people who keep us running. Join the Dot family today and be part of something bigger. After three quarters of play, Triopia leads Griggsville Perry by a score of 38. 33 GP cut a 10 point halftime deficit to five and it will be Trojans basketball to start the fourth quarter and Brian Shoemaker is going to tell you all about it. Mueller with the basketball picks it up in the backcourt guarded by Lane Lipkin and he's got to get rid of it it's stolen away from Myers. Myers goes up and gets the layup and just like that GP has made it a three point basketball game they trail by 19 at one point it's 38 35 as we start things off here in the fourth quarter. Snow with the basketball. Back to Mueller. Still full court pressure here from the Tornadoes. They get the basketball now over to Snow. Cross court pass. That was Struby. Snow now with it again. Griggsville Perry forcing Triopia to run just a little bit more hurry up than maybe they'd like to at the moment. With the basketball now is Struby on the right side. Gets it back up to Mueller. Now here comes Struby on the baseline. They get it into back free throw line guarded by Eli White. Spin around. Nothing there for the big junior. He's got to get rid of it. With the basketball, this is Mueller again. Kicks it on the left wing over to Struby. Seven minutes left to go here in this one. So glad you're watching on what has been a fantastic night of basketball here from Payson Seymour High School. Mueller with the basketball. Struby thought about the three. Cross court pass to Snow. Triopia being a little bit patient here, or maybe a little bit confused on what to do against this GP defense, which has picked itself up here. Nethery with the basketball, kicks it out. Now Mueller drives in, up with a hand, no good. Rebound fought for, comes down to the hands of Nethery, and he's going to be a fouled on the floor by Grigsville Perry. I'm going to go against Eli White, so his fourth team foul number five. McAllister will come back in. Eli White will take a seat. It's a three-point basketball game. Triopia's got it underneath their own basket. 
one of these teams will face the Payson Seymour Indians in the regional championship on Friday night. And if you put money on that on your DraftKings account, you're a happy man this evening. With the basketball is Beck. Cross court pass over to Snow. He'll take a three ball. Back of the iron, no good. Rebound fought for. Comes down to the way of Triopia on the hustle play from Struby. Beck will get the rebound and puts it back in. KJ Beck extends the Trojans lead. It's a five point game, 40 to 35 here with 6.09 to go. Offensive rebounds again for the Trojans come back to benefit them as Lane Lipkin takes the three and hits it. He's got a dozen and it's a two point Griggsville Perry deficit. Six minutes to go here. And this is turning into a fun one as Mueller's got the basketball, now gets it back over to Struby. Whips it across the round. Snow had to get acrobatic for that one. He didn't like what was coming, which was a double team, and he'll take the timeout. We'll take it to Triopia 40. Griggsville Perry 38. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll be back in 30. High County Lumber is the place to start all your building projects. They offer a huge selection of framing and specialized lumber, beautiful interior and exterior doors, and multiple roofing options that can be delivered to your rooftop. Start your indoor projects at Pike County Lumber 2. New or renovated bathrooms are one of their specialties. Updating your flooring, time for a new kitchen, any project from start to finish. You can trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Both teams took a seat, but it was a 30-second timeout. But they're, hey, they're back on their feet now, and we're back to basketball action as Snow saw the impending double team and took the timeout, Damon. Charlie, I think right here for Triopia, what they need to do, they need to look for Aiden Nethery or Snow at that free throw line extended and let them try to drive the back at, but almost out of bounds off the hands of the Trojans, but Dane McAllister just got a hand on it, tipped it away, so Triopia will have to inbound it at the very end of their bench. Nethery will be the trigger man for the Trojans. You know, something if you're familiar with the history of Tornado basketball over the past, say, 20-ish years, Damon, Griggsville Perry hasn't had a lot of lengthy height like this very much. You had a tall guy in the main of Joe Myers as Nethery's free throw jumper is good, making a 42-38 basketball game, but Griggsville Perry hasn't had a lot of length and height like they do now with McAllister, Eli White, Michael Myers, who has grown a bunch. It really adds a lot of dimension to this team's defense. With the basketball is Lane Lipkman. 5.20 left to go here in the basketball game. GP trails by four. Top of the key is Lane Lipkman. Kicks it back over to Brother Wyatt. Now back to number 12 to 25. They keep working it around. Nice ball movement here from GP. Wyatt Lipkman drives baseline. Nothing there. Myers three ball is good. Michael Myers knocks it down. It's a one point basketball game. 42-41. You said it before, Damon. That's the type of three-pointer that Griggsville Perry needs when it's in the flow of the offense and it's a wide open shot. With the basketball now is Snow. He'll drive baseline. He'll get fouled by Kirk on the drive. It'll be a foul against GP, their sixth. Still not a bad foul right there as Ryan Snow was attacking the bucket. But as Brian told you, six team fouls now for Griggsville Perry. Flint Kirk whistled for his third. So it will be bonus the remainder of this contest for Griggsville Perry. Triopia has shot the free throw line very, very well tonight. They'll inbound it to Mueller. Beck trying to get it inside. They instead give it to Nethery on the left wing. Takes a three ball. Wide open three from Nethery is good. He looks at the bench and says, gotcha. 45-41. 22 points on the night for the senior, Aiden Nethery. GP quickly working the basketball again. Now they get it up to Lane Lipkin and McAllister almost giving it away as quickly as he touches it. Three ball from Wyatt Lipkin and no good. Rebound long fought for. Comes down to the hands of Snow. He's going to go up against Myers. He'll get fouled and now McAllister's going to slap the backboard. Triopia wants a goaltending. As McAllister went up with it, his hands definitely came in contact, Damon, but there won't be a call there, so it'll be a foul. So Myers is going to be whistled for his fourth. They're going to get together and talk about this. Yeah, Myers or McAllister's hands definitely slap the backboard. I don't think that's a question. They're not going to, they're going to say no, nobody no. saw it. Nobody saw it, so it's still going to be two free throws for the senior Ryan Snow. Snow's got 13. Triopia 12 of 13 from the free throw line in this one. Make it 13 of 14. 46-41 basketball game, 4.18 to go. Our buddy Gavin Hilgenbrink has been running the camera for us all night. He's been standing all night, Damon. We've been sitting. Part of the night, that last uh, last quarter of the uh, Payson Seymour-New Berlin game, there weren't many people sitting no, for that there, one. there were not. 
Snow eyes up the second free throw. He'll make it, and we'll get a substitution here for Triopia as they re-extend their lead to six as Littleton will check back in for the junior Austin Struby. GP had it down to a one-point game, 5-0 run for the Trojans. It's a 47-41 lead for Triopia as we approach the four-minute mark of the ballgame. Lane Lipkeman with the basketball, kicks it over on the left wing to Wyatt Lipkeman. Four minutes left to go. If you've got a friend, tell him to get tuned in now because it's going to be a great four minutes of basketball. Lane Lipkeman with the volleyball line, still the zone look. Three ball on the way from Wyatt Lipkeman. He knocks it down and gets fouled by Littleton. And Wyatt Lipkeman's knocked it down to three, and he'll go to the line for the old-fashioned four-point play, Damon Emery. Littleton whistled for his third. That's the sixth team foul. So Lipkeman to the line, and just like that, a chance to cut this back to a one-point game, 47-44, so check that be a two-point game. We weren't the best math majors, folks. It's okay. Free throw's no good. Rebound comes down to the hands of KJ Beck. I don't, I don't work at a bank. It's all right. It's all right. Lipkeman couldn't get the free throw to go. <laughs> Mueller now has got to get rid of it. He gets it to Snow. A lot of pressure here from Grigsville Perry. Snow might have got away with a little push there, and it's going to be a double dribble violation. They call it from the baseline. A turnover on the Trojans with 3.40 left to go. Michael Myers in. Flint Kirk takes a seat. So it's 47-44. GP a chance to cut into this deficit a little bit more as Lane Lipkeman's going to bring it across the time stripe. They might even tie it, Damon. That's math. Numbers are hard. Numbers are hard. <laughs> Wyatt Lipkeman with the basketball. Lane Lipkeman flashes through the lane. Here comes McAllister High to set the pick on the right side. Gets tripped away now from Beck. Lipkeman picks it back up. 3.20 left to go. Tornado's on the left side. Lane Lipkeman tries to find some lane to room. Nothing to go. Triopia switched their defense from a zone to a man-to-man -man on this possession. Nethery goes against Lane Lipkeman. He goes up with the left hand. Up and under, no good. Crowd wanted a foul. They'll get it on the second time as Wyatt Lipkeman gets fouled by Nethery on the fight for the rebound. So that'll be Nethery's third. Seventh team foul. Send Wyatt Lipkeman back to the line. He just missed a free throw attempt from there previously, but his team trails 47-44, 3.05 to play. The junior's first attempt is up and good. He's hit his season average for the ball game at 18. Real Net and Twine located just north of Fitzfield across from the airport. Give the guys at Real Net and Twine a stop for your concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, and more. Located in Pittsfield as the second free throw is up and good. It's a one-point basketball game with three minutes to go. 47-46 lead for the Trojans. Any foul for each team will be free throws. Triopi gets the ball into the front court and stolen away, and then a foul on Ryan Snow. So it'll be a turnover against the Trojans. They're 18th, and then Ryan Snow is going to be whistled for his first eighth team foul. And actually, they it's say not that's going to be, be on the throws. offense. They say that was going to be before the offensive uh, turnover occurred. Lipkeman saw that one coming from the whole way. He saw Carpenter eye up, and he said that was going to be his to steal. So Tornadoes don't get the check in as they tried to get Garrett Woodward in. So that's going to leave White and Kirk out here for the offensive possession. Lane Lipkeman with the basketball. GP's going to spread it out and look to do a dribble drive attack. Myers has to be careful as he's got four fouls. Lipkeman drives in to his brother Lipkeman. Lipkeman and Lipkeman and Lipkeman all over the place. He got one at the scores table too. Wyatt Lipkeman dribbles through the legs against Mueller. 2.25 left to go. GP down by one. Eli White gets it out about 20 feet from the basket. What a time that would have been for Eli White to knock down a three. Thought about the three, didn't take it. Nice block underneath. Now, that, that play has worked about three or four times, Damon, and GP has not been able to convert on one yet. But that little high-low dish underneath, has they found a lot of shots there. They have, but I'll tell you what, for Rich Thompson, it's uh, it's nice when you've got a group of trees down below that can help protect the basket as they did right there. They grow Myers the, will be the trigger man for the Tornadoes. He finds McAllister. They grow the Oaks tall in Cass County. With the basketball is Myers. Whips it back around the perimeter. This is Wyatt Lipkeman. Checks the clock. He's got 2.06 to try and lead the Tornadoes here to a semifinal win. And at eight against Payson Seymour on Friday night. Lane Lipkeman. Fancy dribbling. Stops and pops at the left elbow. Nothing there. Comes down to the hands of Ryan Snow. 153 left to go. It's a one-point lead for Triopia. 15 rebounds on the ballgame for Snow. That's a lot. And now there's going to be a foul at midcourt here against the Tornadoes as they tried to steal it away, and it's going to go against Lane Lipkin. That's going to be his second, eighth team foul.
Bustos into the line for the Trojans. Zach, Jake Mueller, he's got four points. He's two for two from there in this one. Triopia 14 of 15 from the line. The one and bonus for Mueller is on its way and in and out, no good. Michael Myers with the rebound for GP. Of all the free throws they've made tonight, not the time you want to miss. 140 left to go here in the ball game as Lane Lipkeman has the basketball for the Tornadoes. They'll get in the offensive set. He'll dribble to the left side and hand off to Wyatt Lipkeman. Now to McAllister, he tried the backdoor cut again to Myers and Beck was able to get his big feet on. GP's got two timeouts. I believe Triopia had two timeouts as well for the remaining minute 32 of the ball game. Wyatt Lipkeman will be the inbounds man. McAllister gets open. He gets up against Beck, up with the right hand, a little bit of contact and no call, and now it gets tipped away from Lane Lipkeman. Tornadoes will come back up with it. Fight on the floor as it's a loose ball, and they've got a foul called, and that's going to go against Triopia. Rich Thompson's not happy about it as the foul is going to go against Nether. That'll be Nethery's fourth, ninth team foul, so it's still the one and bonus. And to the line for the Tornadoes goes Lane Lipkeman as Woodward and Dane McAllister are going to check out. 123 to play, one and bonus for the junior Lane Lipkeman for Griggsville Perry. His team trailing 47-46. And Lane makes the first and gives us our first tie of the ball game here. Knotted up at 47. Griggsville Perry looked to be out of this thing, and now they've got the lead. It's a 48-47 game for the Tornadoes. They were down by 19 points, folks. First Look. lead change of the ball game. 118 left to go. With the basketball's Carpenter. He picks it up in double trouble. He's got to find a release valve, and Rich Thompson will take the timeout instead. It's a full timeout. We'll take it, two. We're back in 60. It's a one-point lead for the Tornado. Rough day at work? We all have them from time to time. But the last thing you want to worry about is coming home to your Internet being out. Or even worse, waiting all day to watch the big game, only to find out it's blacked out. With CASCOM, those worries are a thing of the past. Our local technicians are here to service any issues and ensure you have a worry-free experience, whether it be internet, TV, or even home phone. Call CASCOM today at 1-800-252-1799 to schedule or upgrade your internet and TV service. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. Back to live action with you. Tornadoes were down by 19. They now trail, or lead, excuse me, by one. It's 48-47, 1-12 left to go here. Brian Shoemaker, Damon Emery, Gavin Hilgenbrink bringing you the action here tonight in front of a huge crowd at Payson Seymour. Mueller will walk the basketball up. He's guarded by Lane Lipkeman. Tosses it down to Snow. Triopia has definitely been sped up from what they want to play here in the second half. Mueller over to Snow on the right side. Nethery around the free throw line. They're Nethery's been the go-to man in the half for the Trojans. Turnover against Triopia. Wyatt Lipkman steal, shot up, and good. Three-point lead for Griggsville Perry. 47 seconds left to go here as they get it to Carpenter on the right side. They've got to try and get it across half court. They've already had one 10-second turnover. Now to Carpenter. He's got to get rid of it. He's been a, had a rough game here for Triopia. Nethery, three ball up and no good. Rebound comes down to Carpenter. Back out to Mueller, 28 seconds left to go. Trojans have got to score here quickly if they're going to go for two. Snow with the basketball. And now Rich Thompson says he'll take a timeout. We will keep it right here with 21 seconds left to go as Griggsville Perry has a 50-47 lead here, Damon. And uh, Triopia will have the basketball, and you've got to think you got to go to one of the two big guns here in the last 20 seconds. Yeah, I think you're going to look for Aiden Nethery or Ryan Snow, but with 21.1 seconds to play, you don't have to take a three if you're Triopia. You've got to go for a quick two, but you don't have to take a three. But the other thing here, if you're Coach Garrett White, let's say if you get down to the 10-second mark and Triopia hasn't scored, do you consider fouling? You're up by three. It would be double bonus, but you are up three. You would have to rely on your team to be able to box out in the event of a missed free throw. And that might be the only thing. 
Offensive rebounds have kind of went the way of the Trojans here tonight. Of course, a little bit of that came on that one possession where they grabbed three in one time early in the basketball game, but it's going to be Triopia basketball out of bounds coming out of the timeout. 50-47 lead. It's 21.1 seconds. The official time remaining here on the clock at Pace and Seymour High School. The inbounds man will be Snow. Nethery's just in front of him. Followed up by Mueller, Carpenter, and the last man back is back. They'll get it to Nethery. 20 seconds to go here. Mueller brings it across the time stripe, guarded by Lane Lipkeman. Now they work it around to Carpenter. He's at the volleyball line. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Triope is going to try and get the tie here. They get it to Nethery. He hesitates. Three ball up and good for Aiden Nethery. Nethery knocks it down, and we are tied at 50 with 2.3 seconds left to go. The senior comes up big, Damon. You called it. You called his number. He knocked it down. We are tied. It's going to be Tornadoes basketball. We'll keep it right here again because why not? Yeah, Triopia right there. You know, they were, they'd held the ball for so long that they had to take a three no matter what. Aiden Nethery steps up big as he has all night. Knocked down the three with 2.3 seconds to go. Reminiscent of the first game of the night, Brian, except for the three with less than three seconds to play in game one. Gave Pace and Seymour the lead. The three here in game two with 2.3 seconds to play puts us at a tie ball game at 50. Griggsville Perry basketball length of the floor to go, but the big key here, obviously Griggsville Perry wants to get a shot off, but they cannot afford a turnover, whether it be a turnover trying to force it into the front court or if they try to go length of the floor and the ball goes out of bounds without being touched, it would be Triopia basketball under their own basket. We'll see who the inbounds trigger man will be. It's going to be Myers for Griggsville Perry. Triopia is going to apply full court pressure here. Nethery will guard along the baseline. It's 2.3 seconds left to go. It's McAllister, Woodward, and Wyatt Lipkman up front here for GP. Wyatt Lipkman gets the basketball. One second. He's got to fire it from way down, and it's no good. We are heading to overtime. Griggsville Perry rallies from 19 down to tie this one up and take the lead, but Nethery ties it back up on the big three ball for Triopia. We'll be back in 60 seconds for overtime here at Pace and Seymour. Hello everyone, welcome to the beautiful and historic city that is Pittsfield, Illinois, a community that feels like home. Home to over 4,000 residents, a progressive and growing community serves as an amazing place to live, learn, work, and play. With civic, charitable, family and recreational activities available, you'll never be bored here. Attend an event or festival, play some disc golf on a new championship course, spend the day fishing, or even catch a Civil War reenactment. As a community driven by success, Pittsfield provides numerous incentives to assist citizens and local businesses. Our goal in Pittsfield is to truly advance and prosper. Staying healthy is made easy here with access to doctors, dentists, and other medical specialists throughout the community. People come to Pittsfield for a variety of reasons. Stately historical homes, an abundance of natural resources, hunting, scenic areas along the Illinois and Mississippi rivers, festivals, recreational opportunities, and much more. People stay in Pittsfield simply because life here is great. Picture yourself in Pittsfield today. We are back for overtime here at Pace and Seymour. Triopia will get the tip one, but it's going to be pulled away from Wyatt Lipkeman. And Griggsville Perry will get the first touch here to go in the overtime period. Four extra minutes on the clock. Each team gets one additional timeout. Myers with the basketball, drives in, kicks it out to McAllister. He thought about the three ball, gives it back up to Lane Lipkin. Now to Wyatt. Drives around the free throw line, nothing there as he kicks it out to McAllister. Griggsville Perry being a little bit patient here as they've burned 30 seconds in the opening, opening start here, the overtime period. Wyatt Lipkin with the basketball. Now gives it to Myers. He almost loses it, almost gets stripped away from Nethery. 3.20 left to go here in overtime. Lane Lipkin guard up against Littleton. Driving in is Wyatt Lipkin. He's going to go through two defenders, gets stripped away from Snow. It's a turnover on GP. First turnover of the second half against Griggsville Perry. Mueller with it, kicks it over to Snow. Now they get it to Nethery. Free throw line. Jumpers good for Aiden Nethery. Talk about a kid who's come up clutch here in the waning minutes tonight. It, Triopia's got a 52-50 lead. With the basketball is Lane Lipkeman. Wyatt Lipkeman out guarded by Mueller on the right wing. Myers around the left side along with McAllister and Eli White. 
Lipman is going to go one on one against Mueller. Stops and pops in the right elbow. No good. Rebound comes down to Snow. It was an overtime game last time in Concord. And it's an overtime affair here on the team's third try against each other. Littleton with the basketball. Now back up to Mueller. 2.30 left to go in the overtime frame. The first overtime, maybe another one. You just never know. We've had a lot crazier things happen. Wyatt Lipkin with a steal. Steals goes up against Snow, and they draw the foul, and he can't convert, but he'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Will Wyatt Lipkin. That'll be Snow's second. Tenth team foul against the Trojans. So it will be Wyatt Lipkin to the line to shoot two. He's got 21 points. <clears throat> His team trailing 52-50 to 21 here in overtime. His first is off the back of the iron, no good. You've really seen Wyatt Lipkman and Lane Lipkman tonight, Damon. They do such a nice job of anticipating where these passes are going to go. You've seen a lot of cross-court passes, a lot of short passes like that even get intercepted tonight as Wyatt Lipkman's second free throw goes down. It's a one-point lead for Triopia with 2.20 left to go. Littleton, cross-court pass to Snow. That's kind of not the pass you need to make. You leave those hanging up there, and those boys from Grigsville Perry are going to chase it down. Nethery. Had to get rid of it as he got caught at the elbow. Now they get it into the back. He goes up against two people. No call on the contact, but they'll get a foul there as uh, Beck probably really got hammered twice, and the foul will go against GP. Yeah, Ryan Snow picked up the offensive rebound and was fouled by Wyatt Lipman. That was Lipman's first, the ninth team foul, so it sends Ryan Snow to the line, shooting the one and bonus. Snow's got 15 points to go along with 17 rebounds, seven of those on the offensive glass. Free throw attempt from Snow is on the way, and it is good. Seniors are stepping up big here for Triopia in overtime. 2.04 left to go. It's a 53-51 advantage for the Trojans. One shot left for Ryan Snow. It is on its way, and he knocks them both. Snow's had limited minutes here in the past couple of weeks as he's been recovering from that ankle injury. But he's played like a real true leader here tonight. 156 left to go. Tornadoes with the basketball. Lipkeman over to Lipkeman now as he'll drive in against Struby. Nothing there as Wyatt Lipkeman goes in left side. Here comes Myers trying to bully in. Nothing there that time. Tornadoes weaving around the top of the perimeter. 143 left to go here in the first overtime. McAllister with it to Myers on the left side, or right side, excuse me, guarded by Nethery. Now they get it to Woodward. Now to Wyatt Lipkeman. 130 left to go, and this place is as quiet as a ghost town, Damon. Surprising me. With it is Wyatt Lipkeman. Drives around. This is Myers with the basketball. 122 left to go. GP's got to do something here. Trailing by three with a minute 15 to play here in the contest. Wyatt Lipkeman tries to get checked off of Mueller. Nothing there. Cross court pass. This is Lipkeman. He's going to try and go baseline. Can't get around Mueller that time. 107 left here in the overtime. Lane Lipkeman now. With the basketball, Triopia fans applauding their defensive efforts. Myers with the basketball, 58 seconds left to go, and now Garrett White will take a timeout. And it's going to be a full timeout. We'll take a 30-second break, and we'll get you set here for the final here from Pace and Seymour. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields and your situation or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Get ready for action here as we come back with 57.1 seconds left from Pace and Seymour High School. Triopia has a 54-51 advantage over Grigsville Perry. Winner will take on Pace and Seymour coming up on Friday night as they were able to upset New Berlin in a heck of a contest earlier. And we've had a fun one here tonight, Damon. And goodness gracious, we have ripped the lid off of March Madness about a week early and uh, just poured it all over the place here tonight. And we've gotten our money's worth here tonight as we've seen the number one team in 1A knocked off in the semifinal. We've got Grigsville Perry and Pace and Seymour playing to overtime right now. We're approaching 50 seconds left to go. Grigsville Perry trailing by three with the basketball. Lob play to McAllister, up and good. What a play on the timeout as Myers finds McAllister. It's a 54-53 game. 43 seconds left to go. Drew it just how they wanted to. Out of the timeout did Grigsville Perry. Snow with the basketball. Gets it now down to Struby. 
to Nethery with the basketball. 32 seconds. They find Snow down on the block. He goes up with it and good. Ryan Snow from Aiden Nethery. It's a 56-53 ball game. 23 seconds left to go. Woodward with it. Tries to go baseline against Snow. Gets stopped. Over to McAllister. Now to Lane Lipkeman. This is to Myers. Now Wyatt Lipkeman. 15 seconds left on the clock. GP's got to move. Lane Lipkeman with the basketball. He fires up a three. Top of the key. No good. Fight for the rebound. Comes down to McAllister. Wyatt Lipkeman. Six seconds. He goes up with a three. Off the rim. No good. GP's going to get one more. No, it's going to go into the hands of Snow. And Triopia is going to come out with a 56-53 win in overtime against Grigsville Perry. Snow and Nethery come up big in the fourth quarter in overtime for the Trojans as they best Grigsville Perry on the third try of the season and when it counted most to advance to Friday's regional championship. We have reached the Illini Community Hospital postgame show. We're going to take a two-minute break, get some final stats and scoring for you, and we'll be back on what has been a heck of a night from here at Pace and Seymour. Did you know that Prairie Land FS doesn't just sell seed? They treat it and box it right here at one of their local facilities, then deliver it to your farm or fields. Growers trust Prairie Land FS to deliver top performing crop protection products that promise the best performance before, during, and after the growing season. Prairie Land FS, your leading supplier of choice. I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. We will pay the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. It is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring. So the peace of mind of that's very nice. Camp Point Central Sports are proud to have Dew Wester Grain as a sponsor of this broadcast. Dew Wester Grain, they're for you for all your grain and feed needs. Why don't you give them a call and check out all the locations of Dew Wester Grain. With locations in Golden, Paloma, Mount Sterling, Clayton, La Prairie, Liberty, Industry, Carthage, and Blandonsville. For more information, call Dear Western Grain Services, 696-4461. That's 696-4461 or on the web at DearWesterGrain.com. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmdgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDIC. Illini Community Hospital is committed to providing high-quality specialty care close to home. We are pleased to welcome Dr. William Severino, urologist, and Dr. Mark Mount, ear, nose, and throat physician, to the Consulting Physician Clinic team at the Castile Center. Specialty care is also provided for orthopedics, cardiology, podiatry, obstetrics, oncology, and more. Learn more by visiting IlliniHospital.org or call 217-285-2113, extension 3950, to schedule an appointment. Triopia able to fend off a big comeback from Grigsville Perry. They defeat the Tornadoes 56-53 here in overtime in the regional semifinals at Payson Seymour. Damon Emmerich has a final look at your scoring stats. Well, after one quarter of play, Triopia had the 17-5 advantage. They raced out to a 24-5 lead midway through the second quarter on their way to a 30-20 lead at the half. 38-33 was the lead after three quarters of play. Aiden Nethery hit the three-pointer with 2.3 seconds to play in the fourth quarter for Triopia to send us into overtime, knotted up at 50 on the way to a 56-53 win for the Triopia Trojans. For the Trojans in this ballgame, they were 16 of 48 from check that they were 17 of 33 from the field Griggsville Perry was 16 of 48 from the field Triopia shot 6 of 13 from the three Griggsville Perry 6 of 24 from behind the three-point line for the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes they will bow out of the season and scoring for them looked like this two points for Eli White three for Dane McAllister 12 points for Michael Myers 14 for Lane Lipkman and Wyatt Lipkman 
led the way for Griggsville Perry with 22 points. For Triopia, Jake Mueller with four points. Six for K.J. Beck, 19 points and 17 rebounds in this one for the senior for Triopia, Ryan Snow, and his classmate Aiden Nethery, the 6'2 senior, 27 points, 9 rebounds, and the big three at the end of regulation to send this one into overtime where Coach Rich Thompson's team was able to outscore Griggsville Perry 6-3 for the 56-53 win. We're going to come back after a one-minute break. We'll name our Derek Harris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, player of the game, and get you set for Friday's regional championship between Triopia and Payson Seymour, just how everybody drew it up on the message boards. We're going to be back here in 60 seconds on Central Illinois Sports. If your job situation is changing because of layoffs or restructuring, you may have to make several decisions. One important decision may be what to do with your retirement plan. Make sure your retirement stays on track. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, can help. Stop by the office at 1891 Main Street in Quincy, Illinois. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields and your situation. Or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Welcome you back on the Illini Community Hospital postgame show. Time to name our player of the game. Brought to you by Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor. Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement that our young athletes receive from their coaches, parents, teachers, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, understands this, and that's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. Well, Damon, this Triopia squad had a lot of guys step up tonight. You can talk about the rebounding of K.J. Beck. You can talk about the rebounding of Ryan Snow tonight, who put up a double-double. You can talk about the heroics of Aiden Nethery. Really, that just about anybody you want to name tonight in the blue jerseys could probably be a player of the game. Yeah, Triopia came out tonight ready to play. They jumped out to a 24-5 lead. This was a team in Griggsville Perry that had beaten them twice in the regular season, including just eight days ago. I guess that was, yeah, eight days ago. Numbers again, they're hard. And uh, they just came out ready to play. Ryan Snow, the first offensive possession for Triopia, had four offensive rebounds, and they were out running from there and did a good job. Even when Griggsville Perry took that first lead, Triopia could have panicked, but they didn't. Griggsville Perry put up a heck of a fight, down 19 tonight. Wyatt Lipkema was able to help lead the charge. He had a lot of nice plays on the defensive side for this Tornado squad, and Damon, the thing we talk about here for Griggsville Perry is they're going to bow out of the season at 24 and 9, best regular season for the Tornadoes in quite a while since 2015 when that team won a regional championship. But you're going to return every one of these kids next year for Griggsville Perry. There are no seniors, there are no freshmen on this squad. So the team that you saw tonight is pretty much the team you're going to see again next season, barring a couple of freshmen that might come in as they've had a talented little group of eighth graders again this season. But you're going to see a group that's going to be a little more mature, maybe a little more ready for some of these pressure situations. And it's not to say they haven't. We watched this team win a state championship. We know what they're capable of. But tonight, they just kind of fell suspect on some big plays, maybe took a few too many threes that they shouldn't have. And Triopia was able to do the things that counted, which was rebounding and free throw shooting, and they were able to pull out the three-point win tonight. Well, I think, Brian, the biggest key, this is a group of guys that, you know, sophomores and juniors out on the floor at all times, they've seen a lot of varsity experience, but this is the first year where they had to be, you know, the go-to guys. You didn't have a Tate Koonsman out on the court anymore. And for them, you just can't afford to fall into such a big deficit like they did 24-5. to and expect to win a lot of games. Now, credit to them. They found a way to fight their way back into this one and even take a lead. But you expend a lot of energy working your way back in when you fall into such a big deficit. 
And this can go one of two ways for, for a team. You can use it as motivation as you head into your offseason to get ready for, for next year. Or it can be something where you hang your heads and, and sulk and, and don't get into the gym and don't get into the weight room and, and do those things that, that you need to do to get better. But, you know, you, the reality of it is you fell three points short tonight against a tough Triopia Trojan squad. You miss out on an opportunity to compete in a regional championship. But now your kids have to get ready for, you know, take a little bit of time off. Baseball season starts soon for those kids that do play. And, you know, just – step back and, and and breathe a little bit. These kids have played a lot of basketball over the last nine, ten months, and you know, let your let your legs come back under you for a while. Another thing to think about if you're a Tornadoes fan, and we'll talk about Triopia and get to the regional championship here in just a second. You go back to that team from 2015, Damon, they kind of got caught in a regional of death, kind of similar to this as juniors. Came up against a tough pairing against Pace and Seymour. It didn't go their way, and it was actually a much worse outcome than this. That team rallied the next year, won a regional championship. So if you're a Griggsville Perry fan, still a lot on the horizon to be excited about. This is a hardworking group of kids. They've got a lot going their way. They've just got to find the way to fill some of the holes that lack maybe sometimes on the rebounding side and maybe a little bit on the defensive structure. Well, not very often, as you touched it on it, can you say that 100% of your scoring – is going to return for the following season as things look at this moment. And that's a that's a big key. But, you know, the other thing is for the kids that are juniors that are going to be seniors and the kids that are sophomores, you're going to have to – playing time, you know, a lot of seasons you go in thinking, oh, the seniors are gone, I've got a better chance of playing come next year. That's not the case when you go into the 2023-2024 basketball season. So these guys are going to have to put in some – some work to make sure that they don't get passed up here in the offseason. I have no doubt that they will, but it's a it's a tough way to end for Greg Zill Perry, but also by no means is it something that they need to hang their heads about and think, oh, we don't have any talent coming through for a while because there's a lot of talent still here. There's talent in the younger ages coming through. For the Triopia Trojans, it's been a squad that, you know, Damon hasn't had a lot of big runs of wins. You go back through their season, it's been a lot of little ups and downs and hurdles here. You know, they had a point where they maybe won about 8 out of 12 basketball games through uh, December and early January. Um, they ran through, got a consolation championship at Winchester after almost upsetting Jacksonville route. But it's a team that's really been all season long maybe trying to find itself. And now that you've got Ryan Snow back, it's go time here for the seniors. You see kids like Aiden Nethery, who has had to step up with extended minutes and a lot more of leadership here in the last two to three weeks. And it's all kind of coming together now. And, of course, having Rich Thompson at the helm doesn't hurt this squad. But they're going to take on a Payson Seymour team in a basketball game that um, is really, really could go a lot of ways. You could have these two teams try and shove it out in a big three-point shootout. You could see Triopia try and slow things down and really utilize the high-low again, or you're going to see a lot of Brian Deeker taking it to the basket and having a big 30-point game. You just don't know how it's going to go, and it's probably going to be a really a lot of fun for us here on Friday night. Well, if you're Rich Thompson, you never want to see one of your players go down with injury, especially a senior. But in a way, it maybe was a little bit of a blessing for the Trojans in the sense that it did force other guys to step up. We saw Aiden Nethery tonight, probably had the best game of his career. K.J. Beck, only six points on the, so in the scores column, doesn't look like he did a lot, but he created havoc down low, had quite a few block shots, deflected some passes. These guys just come out and played well, but the Trojans team, they understand what their role is. They understand who the scores are, who they need to get the ball to, and they play with the demeanor of their head coach and Rich Thompson. They're going to go out there with no fear. They're going to play hard. They're going to make the officials call fouls because they're going to be physical with you. I think we could be in for a, in a matchup on the Friday night we didn't anticipate, but we could be in for a heck of a matchup come Friday night with Tyler Dushinsky's Pace and Seymour Indians here on their home floor against Rich Thompson's Triopia Trojan squad. It's going to be Triopia and Pace and Seymour. Damon Emmerich, myself, Brian Shoemaker, and Gavin Hilgenbrink will be back here on Friday night. Pre-game probably starting somewhere around 20 till 7, maybe 15, quarter till 7. You know, just kind of depends how long it takes us to get out of the hospitality room. We want to thank Greg Bisher, Barb Speckhart, Don Miller, and everybody who has been so great to work with here tonight. 
at Pace and Seymour to give us a little bit of a prime spot here to bring you tonight's broadcast. We thank you all so very much for watching. We hope we will see you on Friday night for the regional championship. We remind you, we'll have regional championship games from Payson and from Camp Point. Put one on your TV, put one on your tablet, watch both at the same time, and you're going to get a lot of great basketball coming up here Friday night on Central Illinois Sports. For Brian, Damon, and Gavin, we're signing off. We'll see you Friday night. This has been a Central Illinois Sports production.